Okay. The most frustrating feature of Monster Hunter World. Introducing the SOS Flare. Players in a pinch can use this mechanic to call upon other players for help. But what happens when your help also needs help? That brings me on to the main point of today's video. <laughs> I have witnessed many players in my time join other players SOS quests in hopes of getting carried alongside the yep. individual who called for help in the first. Bro, this is 100% used to be me. And I am so sorry I contributed to the issue. I feel bad. <laughs> um... It wasn't a lot of the time, but it was just like sometimes because when I first got into Monster Hunter World, it or I first got into it uh, during Iceborne. I didn't play just base world without the Clutch Claw. Um, and what was it like three, four years ago or something? Is when uh I I played Iceborne, and then when I did, uh, I was fucking silly and I used the Defender armor. Uh, during world so <laughs> when i got out of like low and high rank and into iceborne into master rank it was a rude awakening of uh just how uh polarizing the fights were with with um the monsters because i've i tried like all like not all the weapons but i've given a lot of the weapons like a good i don't know i would say 30 ish hunts for for most of the weapons um let me see if i can remember uh i think i started like everybody with the great sword and then i tried hammer and then i tried long sword and then i tried insect glaive for a hot one but i did not like it because i didn't understand what the fuck to do but i liked the movement but i didn't like that stupid ass bug um what else uh, I dabbled in dual blades and I thought it was like, oh, okay, you move really fast. This one feels like uh, you're just moving and grooving. You got so much mobility with uh, with dual blades. I liked it. And then what else? I did not mess with switch axe. I did not mess with charge blade because I was like, those look too complicated. Anytime like the, I saw the transformer weapons, I was like, damn, those are cool, but that's too complicated for my ass. <laughs> um, and then I saw there was like the all the ranged weapons and the hunt horn. I dabbled in them, but I was like, eh, these aren't for me. Um, and then I would, you know, do the, the regular ass thing of consuming content and trying to figure out what the meta weapon, uh, the flavor of the month weapon was. And then I settled on longsword for a good bit. And once I got bored of longsword, I just settled on sword and shield and just made like a wide range of sword and shield because I thought it was like the, the coolest thing, like just spamming like perfect rushes. And then whenever I stared at somebody's health, I saw someone's health go down. I'd pop like a potion with it and they would just be like full. And then I, I did a good amount of hunts with sword and shield wide range. And I, it felt cool doing that because it's like, yeah, we couldn't have done this mission without me. In my heels that was my like mindset <laughs> during that era and it was cool uh i completed a lot of fights with it but i i honestly do remember failing uh like not a lot of hunts but i do remember failing some hunts um when the game came out like for sure that's the place in my experience this never ends well to test this theory further, I'm going to be completing 5 SOS hunts in today's video. Starting off easy and progressing to the hardest hunts in the game. Oh Jesus. Oh, and I'm not allowed to move on until the quest is successful. I have to help out the newer hunters after all. Stick yeah. around to the end of the video as I'll be challenging all of you. With I will say this. Since Monster Hunter World Iceborne got so many people to play the game. And, you know, and then, you know, Rise Sunbreak came out and then it was like, meh on that part. When Wilds comes out, I think there's going to be way more players that are more readily equipped and understand the game loop and how to fight monsters. I think it's going to be like a maybe. I do think it'll be like a golden era when Wilds pops off and that comes out. Because I do remember seeing like a graph or some shit. Where it was like the, the concurrent, or not the concurrent, but like the, the um, what was it, the units sold for each Monster Hunter game. And it was like, uh, what did the graph look like? 
it looked like uh what is it like there is it that it was like monster hunter one two three four five and it was like meh meh and then there's three and it's like yeah it's getting a little bit bigger and then there's four so it's like yeah it's going up but here comes five which is like world iceborne it, it, it just fucking shot up so that was the graph so i would imagine depending on how well wilds comes out and like how well it's received it could be like just stonks like through the roof in terms of like players the task as well we start this challenge by joining a kulu hunt the player in question is only master rank three meaning they've only just made it to iceborne whether this is actually a brand new player or a return to world oh shit and is and are you rocking the arch tempered Namiel set and with dual blades which is like the only weapon that in like uh what do you call it the bow where, where is good for <laughs> well it's hard to guess with a quick oh no that's long sword but this doesn't really matter as we clear the hunt pretty quickly without uh, yeah with a single helm breaker <laughs> any issues slightly stepping up the challenge we go to anjana less experienced players can often go into this fight under geared and don't realize just how much damage Anjanath can really do on top okay. of this his hitboxes feel kind of annoying if you don't have the positioning down which also yeah. results in a few cards. You'll notice throughout the video, other hunters joining the quest, as the SOS flare remains active until all four party slots are filled up. The hope is that these players are also experienced in fighting the target monster. After all, yeah. Anytime I popped a flare, I was like, please, somebody help me with this shit. Or, you know, maybe if somebody completed it like a couple missions before or, or something, like, hey, come back. Maybe you're trying to grind an armor or or something or a weapon and you need some extra parts. Come back. Help me with this fucking story quest. Um, I'm in shambles. That was my mindset, but it, I didn't need... My mindset wasn't like... I mean, I guess it kind of was. I wanted to get carried, but I didn't believe that the players were getting that much more powerful. Like, if you do, like, the Anjanak quest... And then you go like a couple quests before or a couple quests afterward. And then you look at like, let's say you look at your weapon tree or maybe you just did the, the story engine quest once and then it, you know, it unlocks the weapon and the armor. And then it's like, okay, I want to farm this shit, but I don't want to do it alone. So I kind of get the moves, but not really. Um, that was my mindset of like someone that like just did it once and succeeded so it's like, hey, maybe the weapon or armor is good and like, just come back and like, we'll farm it together. That was about my expectation for an SOS. I didn't expect to get like some like raging braggy fucking all decked out dude with like, like some of the best fucking armors and weapons in the game with all like offensive shits that can do like one combo and like just topple the monster and all this shit. Maybe you know all the game mechanics. Maybe you don't know. I mean, because when you're a new player trying to learn this game, it not going to lie, it's fucking hard. I think I have like seven or 800 hours in this game and it's not nothing, but it's not something compared to like, you know, some of these other guys with like thousands of hours. Well, we're joining the player to help the player in question. This seemed to be the case as we capture Anjanath with zero cards in the hunt. Now, let's step up to an Elder Dragon. I chose Tiostra as there's a lot going on that can mm -hmm. easily cart a player if they're not paying attention. Oh yeah. AOE explosions, status effect. Oh yeah. There's a ton of bullshit for fucking Tio, dude. When I was first learning how to like fight Tio, I didn't get like when you first fight each Elder Dragon, I didn't understand that the Elder Dragons are you're more likely to counter build in order to counter some shit that an elder dragon is doing so like since i never played like uh like one through four monster hunter or any monster hunter before that i was like i was under the impression that like i make one armor set one weapon whatever the best one is at the time and then just use that one for the, the rest of the game until like another one that i think is better um i didn't understand that you're supposed to make like an this is my anti Teostra set. This is my anti Kashala Deora set. I mean, 
you don't really have to do that, but you kind of do have to do that, you know, when fighting these monsters for the first time. Not so much, like, subsequent times, but... I don't know. That's kind of how I had it in my head. And I didn't understand that until like the four or five hundredth hour into the game. Effects and heat damage can easily be missed by someone who is tunnel visioning the monster and not keeping an eye on their surroundings. The SOS player in this hunt was much higher master rank than what we've seen so far. Oh. I wasn't sure if I would use this hunt for the challenge. However, with an extremely early cart, I decided to play this one out regardless. While oh. we're here, I want to point out that if you want to be a particularly helpful player, you can bring along items that affect the whole group, such as Dust of Life. We end up yeah. taking Teostra down and watch a couple of players taking a victory lap. Okay, Whoa. this has been way too easy so far, and uh -huh. I've tried to get through this section of the video. Well, the, one of the reasons it's easy is because you know the fights, you are very familiar with the fight, and maybe they're not as familiar with the fight. Or maybe it's you have like just way better gear. Um, maybe you are like have all the items like that you're supposed to have, or maybe these characters, like everyone else, isn't maybe they aren't using items as much as they should be. Um, I mean, there's a bunch of different things as quickly as possible. So now let's get to a more controversial monster from reading the comments. on. Good luck, dude. Good luck on this one. This was probably, I'm just guessing this was outside of Fatalis. This was probably your wall. <laughs> That's why you had to switch to dual blade on this one. My Alatreon video, I know a lot of people hate doing this in multiplayer, even if it's with friends. Yeah. Never mind an SOS quest. To keep things brief, this hunt has an elemental DPS check. Failing to meet it results in a one-shot yep. Nova named Eschaton Judgment. Here's the problem. If you do this quest solo, you can die to the Nova, jump back into the arena, and keep trying. However, if you do- Yeah, you are chewing through his fucking legs, dude. This in a party of three or four, the Nova just kills all players in the lobby, thus using all your carts and straight up failing the quest. If you want to learn more about the Alatreon fight in greater detail, you can watch the dedicated video I did on him. Asmongold himself watched this video and had this to say. There's the, uh, there's the video. That's a good video. I think that's fair. So check it out. Okay. Attempt one. We did a good job of doing the mechanics, but players got caught off by some of his moves. Ultimately, despite reducing the power of. And maybe not some of his moves, but. Bro, Alatrion is a fucking bitch, dude. He's Nova. The player who called for help in the first place gave the final cast likely due to lack of knowledge on how to heal through it. Yeah. In fact, they didn't actually try to heal, so maybe this was the very first yeah. time they got this far. Attempt 2 was interesting. I accidentally joined the event quest version and not the special assignment, meaning this player had already beaten Alatreon. The player calling the SOS still carted, and the player who joined to help also gave one away. We ended up beating him with one life remaining, Dang. It's still interesting to see how a player trying to farm him for gear still has a rough time through SOS. For me, this kill didn't count towards the challenge, however. I wanted to- Bro, to be able to do this shit, like, consistently, it takes many kills to, like... First of all, you have to be able to want to do it. Um... Want to do it that many times to understand it, but, like, I would argue that most, like, people that, like, want to fight every monster and beat it, like, once, they don't want to have to go through the painstaking process of VOD reviewing the, the fight, like timing the monster attacks, learning where, learning the geometry of their own weapon, um, trying to figure out where they can and can't punish, trying to figure out their own uh, attack lengths, like in terms of like seconds or whatever, like punish windows and shit like that. That's not how players play video games. They do not fucking... Uh, like whip out the whole Excel spreadsheet to try to figure this shit out because that's what they like because if that was the case everybody would be fucking playing POE all right but like POE is like pretty successful and popular but like it's not it's not killing it it's not like world known world renowned because it's so like complicated and like kind of intimidating to a casual when you whip out that big ass uh you know skill tree and whatnot um yeah, Alatrion literally pushes, like, every hunter that has never did, like, fought him solo, like, and, like, killed him once. It pushes, like, every hunter to the brink of, 
like just quitting the game. It's like, this is so fucking stupid. To really help a player beat it for the first time. So I went looking again. I found some low master rank players attempting the fight and were pretty close to taking the monster down. However, we ran into a strange roadblock towards the end of the hunt. I hope this was only me that disconnected and that they ended up taking him down. But this was so annoying knowing just how low he was. Uh. Anyway, I went back to town and we began the search again where I found this player. This quest was still a special assignment, meaning he hadn't cleared it yet. Oh My shit! Guess is that this is an existing save file due to his high master rank. I'm assuming he came back to the game, much like many players have, to try and tie up some loose yep. ends. Same. Maybe I got lucky with the players who were joining these quests alongside myself. But what I a nice guy. The DPS check was never an issue in these quests. Most carts in these hunts derived from players getting hit by breath attacks or his dragon explosion. I know a lot of you have a different experience with this, so yeah. let me know in the comments. Anyway, we take him down. Yeah, for me, on Elatrion, I tried to do it with uh, arguably some of the easier weapons in terms of like elemental damage. Like, uh, I would always try to do it like at least with two player, like myself and my buddy, because we played like almost every mission like together. He would play on Switch Axe, I would play on either Sword Shield or Charge Blade. And, like, I even watched videos about this fucking shit and, like, had a position. And, I don't know, I would, I still couldn't, f like, fucking do it. <laughs> like, even with, like, me and my buddy. And I just, like, quit the game. I was like, if I can't fucking do a Latreon, then what business do I have trying to figure out fucking Fatalis when my other buddy got carried through Fatalis and he's telling me, bro, you don't want to do it. It's too fucking tough. So I was like, okay, I feel like I've beaten, like, every other monster besides these two and I'm pretty content because I played the game for like 700 hours or, or seven or 800 I don't remember something like that I got my money's worth and I bought the game on sale okay a hundred percent I enjoyed a lot of the time I spent with Monster Hunter World and Iceborne and I think it it's like the game that like first drew me in and it's like I'm a fan now despite these two like assholes that enraging bracky all right, fuck that bitch. Um, despite those two, down and had a wholesome moment. I asked if this was his first kill, to which he responded after many attempts. Oh shit! Really happy knowing I helped another player overcome an obstacle that they had been stuck on. It reminded me of how I got my first kill on Alatrail three years ago. And it's like, I would say most people that played up until Fatalis. If you beat Fatalis, I would say most people probably got carried through Fatalis. Through like, like SOSs and like everyone just like riding the struggle bus together. And it's like, oh yes, we did it. And then if you wanted the gear, like the, the armor set and the weapons, because I think the, the dragon element on these things were like pretty fucking good. Like, and if you wanted to like do it over and over again, it's like, okay, yeah, let's everybody do it together. Woo. And... Like, I would say the amount of people that cleared Fatalis solo is so, like, minuscule. Like, I don't think it would be significant. Like, but what do I mean by significant? Like, I don't know. Out of, like, let's say there's a player base and you just answer the question, did you kill a Latreon at least once? And then everybody's answered, like, yes. Okay, that's the 100%. I would say... Anywhere from like, I don't know. I would say from 20% and less beat a Latreon solo and then about 70 to 80% probably SOS that shit and killed their first one through some means of like getting carried in some way, shape or form. Really progressed far but that's just a guess. This was a humble reminder. We're not quite done with this challenge yet, though. Fatalis, for many, is the most difficult monster in the whole game. Yep. So, let's get started. As with Alatran, the goal here is to join the special assignment version of the hunt in hopes of helping a player beat it for the first time. Oh, shit, the okay. The of this quest is that it's much more likely to go on for a longer period of time. With five oh. cards available and a longer kill time, in general, we could be here for a while longer before failing. At least most Alatran hunts are decided in the first 10 minutes. Attempt one went yeah. unexpected, 
There were a lot of early deaths, yet we still managed to get to phase three. A big issue here was that we didn't break his head before getting here, meaning his firepower was increased and well, Fatalis did what Fatalis does. We did then get the part break, but it was a little too late. Hunts like this can absolutely be frustrating. In a lot of cases, there are certainly times where all the other player needs to do is, well, do nothing. All you need from them is to stay alive and when they die over and over, Bro, your fucking damage is crazy as dual blade. It was annoying. But what I want to stress here is that when you join an SOS, you're joining to assist the player who has explicitly asked for help. You can't yeah. expect them to know the monster's moveset, yeah. understand the mechanics, or bluntly speaking, you shouldn't even expect them to play well. So please, as frustrated as you might be, never take it out on these players. For me, this first hunt was a great attempt and gave the host a full experience of the fight. Anyway, we join the next available quest. And I think that's honestly, I think the SOS feature in Monster Hunter World. I think it was a good feature because it allowed so many players that weren't familiar with the monsters to get at least like one kill and experience the fight. And you know, they could have messed that. They could have had like a difficulty multiplier or like a you know like how a lot of games have like easy, normal, hard super hard super duper hard um and something like that but monster hunter there is no difficulty slider it's just the monster and their move set um but you know whenever you add like a person like there's like a solo version of the monster there's like a two person version of the monster and then there's like a three and a four person version of the monster which share like the same the health pool more or less and that's about the only difference in it in terms of like, okay, the more people you add, the, the monster's health gets higher. So there's that uh, like aspect of it, but it's not like the monster's moveset changes. It's not like the monster does more damage. It's like the monster is the monster. So what if you like had some boys come with you and like helped you defeat it, you still defeated it. So it's like, great. I think the SOS thing, while so like the counter argument is that it doesn't help you learn the fight any better. And if you just fight the monster just enough times to like get the armor and the weapon you want, you don't have to fight it anymore. So then what that does is, you know, you get your armor and your weapons. So you don't want to fight that monster anymore. So then you don't go back and you don't help somebody else. Like the whole pay it forward type deal, like how you're doing right now, which is like, you're like a godsend. It's so nice for doing <laughs> it like it stops uh like the the pay it forward type of mentality so that would be like the counter argument i think i mean there's probably a couple other ones but it's just like the one off the top of my head and get straight back to it i tried to keep faith that our dps would be good enough and thus try to tenderize fatalis whenever possible this way the other players had less to focus on I've had my fair share of deaths trying to oh, you got the shaver. onto Fatalis, so I'd rather take that responsibility on myself mm -hmm. to save any unnecessary accidents. Likewise, learning from last attempt, I shifted my attention to hitting his head more, with often two or three of the other players hitting his chest, I wanting to make sure we were making at least a bit of progress here when possible. Nice. Efforts weren't in vain, as we get the head break in time for phase three. Now, with only two lives remaining, I was feeling great about this attempt, though one spinning breath attack used both lives and took us back to the drawing board. Ah. We rejoined the same player straight away, determined to get him his first kill. This fellow dual blaze player was an absolute blessing to have with us. I could clearly see that they were a more experienced individual, taking full advantage of openings and being in the right place at the right time. Yeah. But, long sword but that's not how, like, granted, there are that type of player where that type of player exists, but some players are like not lucky to be in that like to have that like mentality of like just trial and error and just go at it until you can't go like mentally like do it anymore or some shit you know it's like some players will like trash talk and shit but it's like like i've had those players in my group and that happened to me while i was playing the fucking sword and shield wide range bro <laughs> and i was like amazed that people would talk shit it's like why are you acting this way? I am literally the reason you're not dead right now. <laughs> but I don't know. Like, I wish I could change people's like me like mentalities towards a 
like trying to figure out the fight, but you know, I mean, I can't. The only thing you can really do is like, you know, just go back and like utilize that like pay it forward mentality, really. The player was also decent. However, what was interesting is that he was using the Alatrion weapon and not the Fatalis longsword. This could just be a layered weapon, the same way that I was using a Safi Jiva layered weapon, or he might be one of the players trying to use SOS quests for his own benefit. He seemed pretty competent either way, so I didn't give this much thought until reviewing the footage later. Later on in the hunt, unlucky positioning meant he didn't make it to the gate in time, leaving us with only three lives for the final showdown. I think he uh. would have just been able to make it here, had I gave it an extra second, uh. but I thought I'd play it safe. In phase three, Fatalis gets a new pin move, which will one shot. So in your mind, you're you thinking you thinking you're playing a save, but how do you know in that dude's head, he's like, this guy's just fucking griefing me. He just waited till I got like an inch right to there that he hit slammed the door. <laughs> that could be that guy's mindset. It's like, oh you fucking bitch. <laughs> shot if he has his blue flame active. As you can see here, by shooting him with dragon pods. It prevents him from shooting the fireball and will save your teammates life. This is also applicable for any other fire breath move. This is just a gripe that I have with Monster Hunter and learning like really hard monsters. Uh, like I just uh, like dawned on me until it, it didn't dawn on me until like the six or seven hundredth hour where monsters that are just like being a melee bro and fighting a monster that is just so big. And I would imagine it's even more annoying for Fatalis because like his idle animation is just like up. When you're a melee bro, um, you you are constantly trying to wedge yourself up up like against the monster, and what that does is that it cuts the monster like in half. Well, not really in half, but you know it's like kind of prevalent for Fatalis, um where if they do a move and their tail like is happening on the top half of their body you can't really see what's happening up there because you're a melee bro and you're like wedge yourself up against the monster you know this is a little bit easier to deal with when the monster is just smaller to to tell like the start animations of a move and to you know position yourself accordingly but I don't know. I just thought this was like a really frustrating thing that I didn't realize that was making like a lot of my hunts harder. Like I couldn't figure out a move or like what the monster was about to do next because I'm like wedged up there and I'm like paying attention to their feet or some shit. But I'm not paying attention to like what their head is doing. If he uses. So make sure to keep some handy. Something quite. Because I would say or I would argue that like look at right here. All right, right here. Um, I would say when when you're playing video games, you are more or less focused on like right here, like right in the center of your screen. Um, yes, you have a little bit of like peripheral vision of like, okay, I can kind of see like up here, but it's not like in focus or I can kind of see over here, but it's not in focus. And like the same thing that's like, like on the bottom, like you assume like there's no monster down here on your screen because it's just ground. Um, yes, there's a tail over there, but it, it's clipping through that thing, whatever the fuck it is. But I, like people don't, I mean, yes, it's on your screen and you should be like looking at every thing on your screen, but I don't know, maybe I'm just bad. <laughs> like my eyes are like mostly right here and not so much focused up here, but you don't know if this dude is about to whip out another fire breath because this is all you see now, granted for immersion sake. This is really cool being like right up to like a big ass monster and it's it, it's fucking cool fighting a big ass monster. It's cool fighting like raging Bracky and he's just like the hitboxes are pretty tight. Uh, same thing with the Latrion. The hitboxes are pretty tight. There's a lot of times where you can just like wiggle your way through his legs when he's like doing a move or some shit. And it's great for immersion purposes, but like gameplay wise, I would imagine people take so much damage because uh, they're like you're a melee bro you're wedged up right on his tippy toes and you can't really see in focus of what move he's about to do next what if his tail is like this big um elaborate like head wave and it's like oh i'm about to whip out my fucking fireball are you looking up here nope you can't see because you're focused right here 
this item's next card. I think being so close to the end and with all the pressure building, he decided just to stay in camp for a while. Honestly, <laughs> that's his decision to make. From his yeah. perspective, he probably just didn't want to get in the way towards the end. But again, yeah. if you're the one calling the SOS, it really doesn't matter if you cause the quest to fail. So long as you're learning, our friend's still in camp, we get the much needed head break later into the hunt and progress to the second phase three Nova. A nice double hit on the Dragonator lands and the beautiful track starts playing. Our friend decides it's time to come back and settle the score. He narrowly <laughs> avoids death in this final Nova thanks to another player's dust of life and we push on oh, to shit. finally take Fatalis down. He lets yep. us know this was his first kill which is exactly what I hoped for. Now, nice. before we get to the challenge that I'm going to set all of you, let's quickly recap what I've learned about the SOS mechanic through this challenge. Number one, the player calling for help should be expected to struggle in these quests, and so please just be nice about it. Secondly, yeah. do not join other players' SOS quests if you yourself aren't confident in your ability to help. At that point, just call your own That's SOS. Fair. It's It's what it's there for. If you are joining these hunts, do it with the sole purpose of helping. Finally, don't gatekeep this mechanic. Yeah. I personally wouldn't feel like I truly defeated these monsters had I not done it solo, but that's just me. For many players, it doesn't matter how they beat it, just that they did beat it. Yeah. Ultimately, it's completely up to an individual's discretion as to how they play a video game. As mentioned earlier, so long as you're not hurting other players, who cares? Some people with a full-time job and kids aren't going to be able to grind for hours every single night. Other people might simply just not find it enjoyable. Play the game how you want to and let other people play how they want to. Now, my challenge to all of you. Oh shit. Want to choose either Electron or Fatalis. Go find a player doing this as a special assignment and help them complete the quest. If you want a bigger challenge, do both monsters. I'm going to be a bit arrogant here and ask you to tell them Zenny sent me. Once you've taken the monster down, <laughs> get your name out there somehow. Oh, I'll sure. the video once you've completed the challenge and let me know how you got on. I'll put out a community post with a poll later this week to check in with you on this. So subscribe so you don't miss it. Nice. Hope you enjoyed this week's video and hope to see you back next Sunday. Thanks for watching. Bro, this is a good ass little video. That just like, I'm a fan. I like it. We're doing like Monster Hunter like content. I'll watch. Um, yeah, this is just a good ass video. It just goes over all the, the SOS shit, like all the good and bad players that and like what your expectations should be towards the SOS thing. And I didn't even develop that like mentality until like many hours like into the game. Um, I don't know. I, I like it. I like the SOS thing. But I think after watching this video, I'm a little more. I, I've changed my mind. Like, I, I, I have, like, a more healthy, um, what do you call it, like, mindset about it now, which is nice. But, uh, yeah, I thought it was awesome, and, uh, yeah, I can't wait to see some more shit. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for me. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Later.